Juan? Gary, thanks very much for being with us this week. I think we're going to have some very interesting discussions. Let's start off with this question. What is the U.S. Nuclear Energy Foundation? Give us its history and why it's important. Well, about five or six years ago, uh, I was talking with my brother-in-law, a retired uh, electrical engineering professor at UNR. I think he's been there 30 plus years. Uh, and we were discussing the things that were really important uh, for society in general and the country. And uh, energy came up as one of the prime importance uh, things. Uh, and nuclear energy, uh, to me, seemed very practical uh, and one that had been misrepresented. So basically, uh, I started uh, the U.S. Nuclear Energy Foundation, uh, established it as a 501c3 for the primary purpose of informing citizens educationally about the attributes of nuclear energy development and also uh, we took into consideration the waste uh, reprocessing environment as well. So uh, that, that was the beginning of it. The basic motto of the group is uh, our mission is to influence change in public opinion towards knowledgeable citizens about nuclear energy and waste repository issues. So tell us what you're pitching out there, the specifics about how nuclear energy is safe, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we do presentations to <coughs> Rotary clubs, Kiwanis clubs, and places like that. Uh, we've been doing it for five years now. A couple of methods have included uh, that uh, I have friends up at the Idaho National Laboratory and they have come down and spoken to public meetings. We've had a couple at the university. That's in Idaho Falls you're talking about? Uh, correct. No, they've, yeah, they've right. come down here and did the presentations to our local people uh, on the public basis. And uh, at the uh, Spanish Springs Library, we had a presentation there also with a professor from the University of... So what do you uh, tell people? Uh, we have a series of slides because as we got into, interested in this and started checking with people across the country, uh, there are a lot of people in the nuclear industry, uh, the nuclear navy, et cetera. As they were interested or found out about our focus of uh, just basically trying to bring the uh, the average citizen, uh, common man, up to uh, a power on understanding more about nuclear because it's been misrepresented uh, an awful lot for the past 50 years. Mostly as to its safety, am I right? Correct, correct. And it has almost an impeccable record, ironically. So, uh, uh, but those are the things we try to uh, discuss with the people uh, and, and get them on board with understanding the basics and the, the whole premise of the, the environment is uh, logic, uh, common sense, and deductive reasoning. I am not a scientist or an engineer. And we're trying to fill the gap between uh, a scientist and engineer and communicate with a citizen. It's difficult, I think, because a scientist and engineer is at a level of discussion where he's going to talk and use terms and specifics that is not easy for the average person to understand. What kind of a response have you gotten? We get a surprisingly pretty good response when we talk to people. There are some people that question things, but if you have the answers and, and the, the, uh, the person with you has the scientific background to explain a little bit in more detail, uh, then we satisfy that with most of the people that we talk to. Good. Tomorrow, let's talk about Yucca Mountain. Sure. That's fine with me. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Gary, let me ask the, you this as a follow-up to yesterday. Why do you believe Yucca Mountain is a viable facility? Well, it's been studied for some 20 or 25 years uh, by probably the foremost scientists and geologists in the country. Uh, the National Academy of Sciences and the uh, nuclear, the uh, waste uh, repository, uh, nuclear, what do they call it, the uh, 
uh, I blew it. Uh, That's all right. The, uh, there is a council, the, the spent uh, Nuclear Waste Council. I, I, I can't remember it. I got a cut. Uh, go ahead. Just go ahead and talk, describe it. Well, anyway, there are two national agencies. In addition to that, the, uh, US, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce uh, Institute for 21st Century Energy, the American Nuclear Society, to name a few, uh, and some 26 other national scientific and, and uh, organizations have studied the data for Yucca Mountain, and none of them have been able to conclude that it is not a suitable site for permanent waste storage. But hasn't there been a conclusion that uh, even though it may not be the worst, that it's not the best, and it may not be safe? Uh, I, to me, that conclusion doesn't fly. Uh, the questions that I have about, well, for the most part, Yucca Mountain is, is not, is, scientifically, it has been proven. It, it is only the politics that, that have dissed the concept of Yucca Mountain and that's because the, uh, the people, uh, in my opinion, the people have not had the opportunity to really understand it. What the industry did in this case was it seemed to have run scientists, engineers, educators, etc., through the facility demonstrating it. My take on that would have been, instead of the industry, would have been to go through Yucca Mountain with five or 10,000 uh, regular people. Uh, plumbers, electricians, uh, beauty shop owners, and things like that. I truly believe that if the public had the opportunity to see that and analyze that as I did, I, I think it was 2007 I went through, I was, I was astounded and amazed at the science behind that. But, My, don't, but, but Gary, don't you think that there has to be proof that it is safe? And there's been no proof that it's safe. There's so many questions out there that seem to think that even if you bring in all of that stuff and you put it in lead, that eventually it's going to leak out. Right. Uh, to me, that still comes to logic, common sense, and deductive reasoning. Which means? Uh, they, they've, they've gone. Uh, much of the material that they are going to bring in, at, at, I mean, originally when I started this project, I said, well, within 50 years, we will completely have the ability to reprocess and, and w everything. Regardless of that, the truth is, is that there is still going to be 8 or 10 percent dangerous material left. But at the same time, that material's lifespan is going to be reduced to 500 or 1,000 years, not 10,000. For me to talk about 10,000 years of uh, life expectancy is, is uh, kind of foolhardy. Uh, that, that's just my opinion, and that's just from uh, a, an average Joe on the street. But the, the, the flip side of that, the economic potential economic benefits, the potential of bringing 1,000 or 2,000 scientists and engineers into the state, those items will change the educational system in the state of Nevada for the good. What do you think about transportation of that stuff? Same from thing. The east to the west. That doesn't bother you? No, it doesn't. I ironically, I, I didn't bring it today, but I have a, a little model truck, a little uh, pickup truck, and my wife's pink uh, two-pound uh, weightlifting thing. And when I go out and do my common sense, uh, simple uh, uh, demonstration for the cask, uh, I put it on a table and I roll it off the table, the truck smashes up, the cask rolls down the street. If it hits a car or two, it's going to break them. But as far as it getting violated, that cask will not. Okay. Tomorrow, let's talk about the Nevada Commission on Radioactive Waste. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Jim. Gary, today let's talk about the Nevada Commission on Radioactive Waste and whether it's provided our citizens an impartial assessment of the Yucca Mountain facility. Uh, yes, I, from my perspective, I, I don't think that it has uh, represented the citizens of Nevada impartially. Now, what is it to begin with? Define what it does. Uh, my understanding is that it, it was supposed to be a, a, an organization that was going to process, study the materials as the DOE began the studies on Yucca Mountain. Uh, they, were, they were going to review the materials uh, and the, 
science and engineering as it moved along. During the construction of Yucca Mountain and the drill holes, they started, as they started drilling through, they began at that time accumulating tons of scientific data. And it was my understanding that this, the State of Nevada Review Panel was going to study these things uh, cooperatively with the DOE and, and uh, provide a, an impartial assessment of that environment. What did they find? It seemed, uh, and it seems illogical to me, that, that most of the effort of the uh, Nevada Commission was to find problems with the site and the science as it was moving along. And it, it, uh, in, in public testimony by the former director, Bob Lux, in I think it was 2006 or seven, uh, which I have on DVD recording, he stated that the majority of their science and engineering uh, anti-Yucca Mountain and, uh, data was being purchased out of state and offshore from China, the UK, and Japan. Logically to me, as an average citizen, that makes no sense because this country founded the nuclear energy industry back in the 50s during when uh, uh, President Eisenhower established Adams for Peace. So it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And so for those reasons, I kept looking at it. And my simple conclusion about it is that the majority, uh, in other words, 60 or 70 or 80 percent of the science proves that Yucca Mountain is a viable functioning capacity as a long-term permanent storage place. But is that enough proof? I mean, for me, if I looked at it, I'd say, you know, I want absolute proof. I want 100% proof that there's no problem if that stuff comes into Yucca Mountain. And a 60% proof uh, it doesn't quite get it for me. Well, the, the reprocessing is one of the changes to it. Uh, there, there is no absolutes in anything. It's, it's kind of, to me, strange. Uh, the uh, nuclear plants, as they operate, uh, have stricter radiation requirements than coal plants. If coal plants had to uh, adhere to the same uh, functions or the same uh, restrictions, they would not be able to open any coal plants. So what you're saying is that where the nuclear energy is being used, it's obviously very safe there. Yes. And if they can make it safe there, they can make it safe when they move it to Yucca Mountain. Correct. And it's, it's easier to manage control. It's in one place. It's, it would be safer there. Uh, I've had one scientist, uh, Dr. Bernard Cohen from Pennsylvania, say that you just put it in the ground and leave it there, and nature will, will amortize it itself. You won't, we wouldn't even have to put it in casks. So what you're also saying is that we're missing a great economic opportunity uh, by not taking this on. Uh, that, that's phenomenal, by all means. Uh, it, it's very strong potential there. But not only the economics, I'm as much interested in improving the the educational system in Nevada, and I, that's why I say if you bring a, a thousand scientists into a city or a state somewhere, you're going to have a different uh, outlook on the soapbox derby because these guys are pretty sharp. So tomorrow, let's not talk about storing it. Let's, talking about, let's talk about production in Nevada. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Gary, for the first three days of this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we've talked about storage of nuclear, spent nuclear waste in Nevada. Let's talk about the possibility of producing nuclear energy in Nevada. Talk about that. Well, we can do that, uh, and it's involved in the, the, the uh, separ separation of the reprocessing process of spent nuclear fuel. Talk about reprocessing, because people don't understand what that well, means. Well, I can a little bit, re remembering that I'm not a scientist or engineer, but I've learned quite a bit uh, just basically doing research and reading about the, this thing. Uh, there are two or three companies that, that uh, have built reprocessing facilities. Uh, irony as it is, and I didn't realize it going in, but the reprocessing process is not really uh, nuclear or fusion. It's basically uh, chemical separation. Uh, and that, that sort of was enlightening to me. I think it is uh, like, uh, likewise to anyone else. 
but it's uh, chemical engineering students and these kind of people that need to get into the reprocessing. When but you what, talk about reprocessing, you're talking about bringing in a hundred pounds of spent right, nuclear energy right. and processing that and getting five good pounds out of that. Correct, but it's not only good pounds of new uh, uh, fuel for new uh, plants, but they do have to be a particular design plant to, to re-burn spent nuclear fuel. But also in that process are other things. We in this United States no longer manufacture radioactive isotopes. May, most of those are purchased out of the country now. And uh, we need to bring that industry back into this country. Uh, they're done in a what they call a can-do reactor design uh, in Canada. It does an awful lot of that stuff. So th that's one of the byproducts is our own manufacturing of radio acid. Uh, radioactive isotopes uh, in addition to just spent nuclear fuel. The, a, after the reprocessing is done, there is still a residual 5 to 10 percent of long-term radioactive waste. It must be permanently stored. And the, the reason, uh, for some reason, the in, uh, industries no longer want to or don't want to speak the entire truth about it. And that's why I contend that we still need Yucca Mountain on a national basis because we want to build another 100 nuclear plants. So, uh, you, so, so far in other interviews I've done, people have talked about geothermal energy, yes. wind energy, yes. so on and so on. And now you're talking about an additional source of energy, and that is nuclear. Correct. One professor said just in the, the current 66,000 metric tons that we had have, uh, that there's probably 200 years of uh, fuel there when, when, it, when it's reprocessed.